Hello, and welcome to an overview of the PDS Woodsmill Studio desktop and store. We will be using desktop throughout this video to connect to Woodsmill Studio stores, Woodsmill, and ETP endpoints. The desktop is an open source client and diagnostics tool designed to explore Woodsmill and ETP servers. See the description below for links to our ClickOnce installer and GitHub repository. Let's start by connecting to a store instance running in Microsoft Azure Cloud. After selecting your connection, it will automatically establish a connection and issue a few queries to explore the server's capabilities and supported objects. Desktop will also automatically select the highest supported version and use that version for all the queries. To see all the available versions, simply click Get Version. This store reports that it supports WoodSML version 131 and 141. We'll stick to using 141. Note that several of the options in and application settings can be adjusted from the Settings tab. For more details on these settings, please use our online help website. To open the site, select Help, Online Help, and it will open in your default browser. Next, we will explore the contents of the store using the Hierarchy tab. The Hierarchy tab provides a tree view of all the data on the selected WoodSML server. Note that the result of each of the queries will be displayed over on the right hand side in the Results tab. If there are a lot of wells on your server, you can filter down what is being displayed by using the well or the rig name filter. In this case, we see a well that has a green indicator next to it. This means that one of its well bores is currently growing. Let's filter down to that well and explore its contents. Expanding the well will provide a list of all the well bores underneath it. In this case, there is only one well bore. Expanding the well bore will provide a list of all supported objects under that well bore. In this case, we're going to focus on log. Expanding the log node will allow us to filter for time, depth, or to display all the log objects. Expanding depth, we see that there is a single depth log with a green indicator. This means that that log has recently received new data and is currently growing. Now if we right click on the log, we can select between a few options to get more information about it. Let's select Get Header. The header will provide more detailed information about the contents of the log. In this case, this is run number 2. If we were to go back and right click and get details on the log, selecting return elements all, this will request from the server both the header, the metadata, and the actual log data. As we can see, we have data from 0 to 78 feet. If we were to scroll down, and here's the log data response from the get details query. Note, some servers may limit the response so that it doesn't grow too large. Let's explore some of the other tabs on the right hand side of desktop. The properties tab gives us a property grid to explore the last WSML object that was queried. Selecting a single property provides the documentation from the WSML schema to provide more information on what that property means. Selecting the data tab provides us a column grid view of the last get details query that we issued. This data can be selected and copied and pasted into a spreadsheet of your choice. Next, we have the WITSML Messages tab. In this tab is a complete record of the queries from desktop and the responses from the server. This can be helpful when investigating what the actual query was or the response from the server.
Lastly, we have the Soap Messages tab. This tab keeps a record of all the soap envelopes issued by the desktop and the responses from the store. This can be helpful whenever you need to explore what the options in was on a specific query. The last part of the Woodsmell Browser plugin is the Query tab. As you are browsing the hierarchy, if you ever wonder what query was just used, simply select this tab. It will display the latest query used and also allow you to customize it and reissue it. It's a great environment to allow you to build your own custom queries and test it out. That's it for now for the desktop's WitzML browser plugin. Next we will use the ETP browser plugin to explore that endpoint. The ETP browser plugin allows us to connect and explore a WitzML ETP endpoint. To begin an ETP session, simply select your connection, select which protocols you're going to use, in this case we're going to stick with the default selected ones, and click Request Session. The supported protocols and data objects will be displayed on the Results tab. By selecting the Discovery tab, Protocol 3, we can issue a Get Resources query to see all the supported WITSML versions. Earlier, we explored WITSML 141 objects. Let's now look at WITSML 2.0. By expanding the WITSML Store 2.0, we see a list of folders and the count of how many objects there are underneath it. Earlier we were interested in a log object, but now we're going to shift focus to a channel set. A channel set is similar to a log as it groups together similar channels with a common index. However, in WITSML 2.0, a log can have many channel sets comprised of different subsets of information. But let's go look at channel sets. Expanding channel sets, we see there's four available ones. Let's focus on that last one, depth channel set. Expanding this, we can see the folders for the channels as well as optional resources, such as activities and data assurance records. To view the channel set object, we can select it, right click, and select get object. To view the XML of the object, select the data object tab. Now that we've found our channel set, let's start by streaming some data out of it. If we go back and select the results tab, we go back to our channel set, right click, and copy the URI to streaming, we can now initiate the commands to start streaming. First we'll select start, which creates the streaming session. Then we'll select describe, which describes the channels in that channel set. Then we'll select Start Streaming, and it will start by the latest values, and as new values are being sent to that channel set, they'll be pushed directly to our browser. To explore the store protocol, Protocol 4, let's go back to the Discovery tab. Now let's go explore which wells are available. If we select one, right click and do copy URI to store, it'll automatically select the store tab. From here, we could either do a put object, a get object, or a delete object. So let's just quickly do a get object. If we go back to the data object tab, we can see the XML object. To explore Protocol 6, Grow an Object, let's go back to the Discovery tab and find a trajectory. We can see there's one trajectory on this store. Let's go ahead and issue a Get Object on that. Looking at the Results tab, we can see the URI and the content type for it. 
we're going to copy this information and use it on the growing tab. By supplying the URI, the content type, we can then specify when we want the start and end of the trajectory stations to be. In this case, we're going to start at zero and we're going to end at 10,000. We can then change our query to be a growing object get range. Then we can execute and we should see the trajectory stations within that range output into our data object. Note that each trajectory station is going to be returned in a part, so you might have many messages. The last tab we'll go over is the JSON Message tab. This tab allows users to create their own JSON messages to be pushed to an ETP server. If you need to increment the message ID or new header, click New Header. This drop-down list provides each message for each protocol in a template form. And select from one of the pre-CAM messages from the supported protocols. That's all for the Witzmail Studio desktop and store. Thanks for watching. Please hit the thumbs up if you like what you saw. And click subscribe to receive updates as we publish new videos on our other products.